welcoming the crowd favorite, Matthew B. Cox. Good evening, Matt. What's? Thanks up? for coming back to the show. Yep. We oh look at that we got here today some studio pins. Mm -hmm. So Matt, artsy. What yes are we going to talk about today? What is the title of your new book? All right. I'm, I'm glad you asked. It's it's insanity. The bizarre story of a bipolar megalomaniac's insane plan for total world domination. I think I went a little overboard on the subtitle, but Love you know. It. No? It's perfect. I know. It well, is. You could perfect. do more. Describes it very you well. Think? You think? I could have written the, yeah, a small paragraph. So this is one of your most popular stories. It's a fan favorite about the one and only Frank, Frank Amadeo, Amadeo, the bipolar, schizophrenic, sociopath, megalomaniac. With, <laughs> with <laughs> sociopath. You <laughs> said sociopath. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> You're gonna well, get... what's, what's the actual title for him? Um, he is a rapid cycling, he's an access one rapid cycling bipolar with features of schizophrenia. Yeah. And what, how did you first meet this guy? Um, he was, he came into the prison, I don't know when it was, 2009 or ten, nine, yeah, 2009 or 10, yeah, yeah, 2009 in the low and he was all drugged up for like a year or so. Took him like a year to convince the staff to take him off of the psychotrop psychotropic tropic Psych psychotropic. psychotropic psychotropic whatever the meds yeah and they took him off the meds which helped them kind of clear up his thinking and he started fighting his case of course by the time they took him off his meds he was time barred from actually being able to fight his uh his conviction cuz you only have 1 year so by the time they take him off the meds and he's able to actually kind of comprehend what's going on yeah it's been past a year and he, it's too late to start fighting your case. You only have a year. So anyway, it, he ends up fighting, he ends up fighting a ton of uh, other inmates' cases. And my case is one of the cases that he fought. He was, he was like the go-to lawyer for all the inmates yeah. at Coleman. Yeah, he was, he was a real trained lawyer. He's a real lawyer. Is he an actual, is he a good lawyer? He's a fucking, he's an amazing lawyer. I'm serious. Ama what do you mean? How much time did he get you knocked off? 12 years. Damn. That they didn't, that they didn't want to give me that they absolutely didn't want to give me. And I talked to multiple lawyers on the street that said, you don't have a shot. There's nothing you can do. And yet he managed to get, um, file two 2255s, get the court to appoint me two attorneys. Both attorneys flew down and said, you know, w w what are you doing? You know, and I, they were like, oh, you wrote this motion, but you need to take the plea. You need to take Who else's offering. case did he work that he got a bunch of time off of? A ton of guys. I mean, like, I got a, I got a list of guys in the book. What about Deveroli? Uh, no, no, Deveroli, no, no, no. Deveroli got six years. He got two four-year terms. Okay, and it was actually part of it. Deveroli, for people concurrent. listening who don't know who he is, he's the guy that the movie War Dogs is based off of. War Dogs. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Mm. Yeah. Jonah Hill made Deveroli look. And soft you were, and cuddly. you were hanging out with him in prison. Yes, I wrote, I wrote a memoir for, I wrote Deveroli's memoir, which is called Once a Gun Runner. And we're talking to him. He's, he's, he might come on the show. He, he might be, he might be a guest soon. He may. We keep. We he's scared. He's scared of the being in the in the in the limelight. He is. He doesn't want. Does to he laugh like like Jonah Hill does in that movie? Did you meet? You met him? Oh yeah, he spent I, I, years I, I, with him. I, I'll bet you I spent a hundred hours with. Does Deborah. he laugh like that? Never showed up on time. <laughs> Not one time did he ever show up. Uh, 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 never, never. You couldn't let him walk off or uh, like, hey, I'll be back in twenty minutes. Never see him again. <laughs> Got to go hunt him down. He'd turn around, he, he'd walk in his cell and turn around and look at you go, oh, shit, oh, oh. And then he'd, oh, all right, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Did he, I don't know, he doesn't, I don't remember how Jonah Hill laughed, but Deveroli laughs. laughed. That's a real high-pitched laugh. It was, like, really weird. And no, he, the, Deveroli laughs, like, just, like, in your face, like, <laughs> I mean, just, like, he's, he's, cra he's, he's crazy. It's great. <laughs> what, what, are, what are his um, conditions? Does he have any of these, these conditions that the oh, emperor has? He's bipolar. He's bipolar, sure. bipolar, narcissistic, mm. arrogant, pretty much, pretty much same stuff I had. But, uh, but so how long have you been working on this book about uh, Frank Amadeo, the emperor? I've been writing. Uh, and the, why do you call him the emperor? Be, all right, let me. Can I give you want me to give this? this, this no. you, you told me. I want to know. I want to know why this. why everyone calls him the emperor. Because since he has been a, 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 in his teens, he has believed that he's hearing the voice of God 
tell him he is preordained to be emperor of the world. Now, lots of people think that. Lots of people say that, right? Not lots of people. What am I saying? Lots of people. Lots of homeless people say that. Like <laughs> crazy people say yeah. that. The difference is, you know, he graduates high school. He goes on to college. He ends up getting a law degree. He becomes a venture capitalist. He gets, he, according to the IRS, he has over 70, or not IRS, this the is the FBI. FBI. According to the FBI, he has over 70 uh, companies. He um, committed a major fraud. And he was hiring, they said, uh, he has hired retired FBI agents, IRS agents, and Secret Service agents to work for him. Um, he had several, like, small black water-style water companies. Uh, he puts this whole thing together. And the, his whole purpose for building this whole conglomerate is to ultimately take over the world. He tried to buy fighter jets. I got pictures of him with the fighter jets. I've got, oh, not just, look, it's, it's not just that. Bro. Jesus Christ. Look at this. This dude's gnarly. This is, well, I'm looking at pictures of this goofy fat man, Frank Amadeo, <laughs> standing next to a fighter jet with his foot up on the ladder like he's posing next to a fucking sports car. And this hit the C, one of the other CEOs of his company is, is the guy that's sitting in the cockpit. They fly in. I talk about it. They, they fly in like two... Two airplanes, I forget what that was, an F-18 or F-22 F or something. They fly him in, but he's actually trying to buy um, a, like a squadron, like two dozen F-14s and F-15s. How much are those planes? I don't know. The, the total purchase was like 60. Uh, okay, we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to answer that. Um, the total purchase of the planes was uh, 60 million. So I don't know what a used F-15 goes for, right. but if, if it's 30 years old, and that, you know the technology is 30-year-old technology, but they still fly them all over the Middle East and in Africa and, yeah. and um, you know, all over Europe, they're still, you know, um, what is it? Uh, Israel's still flying F-15s, F-16s. He's trying to buy F-14s and F-15s. Did Frank Amadeo give you permission to publish this book about him? Um, yeah, he did. I mean, he, he, did. he participated in the writing of the book. He so, participated in the writing of. Does he know you options. published it? I don't know if he knows. I if I don't know if he knows I published it. So you think it's better to ask? It's just that it's like ask ask for forgiveness instead of for permission type deal with a book. I don't. I don't. He doesn't I don't have need, to. I don't right? need permission. Oh, you don't need you, his permission to publish it. How do I need a permission? You participated. You knew I was writing. Because it's about him, right? I was writing a book. You gave me permission. You knew I was writing a book about you. you. Participated. If you talk to a reporter and suddenly two weeks later, you're, there's an article about you talking to yeah. the reporter. Are you going to say it's freedom of speech? Yeah, but I just feel like it'd be so scary to. You know, you said how good of a fucking lawyer he is. He got twelve years off your sentence. Like, don't fuck with a guy that's that good of a lawyer. Because, my God, listen. I don't know. It just seems uh, like a I, sketchy look, thing to do. I, it seems I, like, I hey, maybe that I could be a pretty, concern. Pretty, I feel pretty confident about the Constitution of the United States giving me permission, though. Yeah. Pretty sure. Okay. So if you were in public and you videoed someone, two guys getting into a fight, and you put it on YouTube, are you allowed to do that? Yeah, you are. You are. Right. He actively participated. Actively participated star, in the book. Mm. I mean, told me, gave, gave me all of this information. He gave me all this. What is all this information you have over here? What is all this paperwork? I mean, this is an F this is FBI this is an FBI three oh two, talks about his companies, talks about how he's hiring all these guys. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what is this? What is this? I don't know, man. I didn't really have time. Oh, these are articles mm -hmm. about the Congo where he was um, when he tried to take he tried to do a, a try to pull off a political coup in the Congo by backing a political candidate. This is uh, an article in the uh, Herald Tribune. This is one from the New York Times. Wow. This the is New, New York Times. Times. This is one from World Matt, News. You made it now. NBC. This is. Oh, listen to this. So I looked up private military. 2006, this New York Times article was from. 32 charged in coup plot being sent home. Congo said it was deporting 32 foreigners, including three Americans that it charged last week with planning a coup. Before coup, national coup, elections coup. in July. Can you Same. read it like Michael Barbaro? Who's Michael Barbaro? The guy from the Daily. Oh. That is. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to do that. <laughs> A coup before national elections in July, saying it would have been t it would have taken too long to prosecute them. Officials said the men, who also included 10 Nigerians, 19 South Africans, worked as security guards and were found with weapons. The American's employer, AQMI Strategy Corp of Acme, Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Acme. That's, Acme. That's his company. Acme. Ac Aquami. Strategy 
Corp of Orlando, Florida, said they were providing security and campaign counseling for a candidate in the elections and were not carrying any weapons. A United Nations spokesman of Kinshasa, Kinshasa. the capital, is that the capital of the Congo? Mm Mm-hmm. Has said the organization, organization believes the arrests are an attempt at political manipulation before the elections. All right. So Interesting. you can see that Acme Corporation. Yeah, that's his Frank company. Am- Frank Amadeo. Okay. Yeah, it was actually called Acme Corporation. Acme, Acme. is spelled A-Q-M-I. Right. Uh, <laughs> Q. Does he know Q? Is he in Q? Is he, is he Q-A-non? So, that's a sign. So uh, if anybody I looked is up Q, private military companies, right? Like, like uh, um uh, Dinotech and Blackwater and all those, right? Yeah. So right here, and this is like this is this guy from Blackwater, the chairman of Blackwater, and this is everything. This is his company right here, is Acme Strategy Corp. That's Frank's company. Wow. Same company. So, I mean, so he had a bunch of. Anyway, look. The point is, is that he was a lawyer. He actually was disbarred. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Do you I don't know what's like the deal. I don't know what the deal. What's going on? <laughs> nothing. I was just looking at him. <laughs> I can hear a mouth breathing from here. I mean, I, I really only do like a, a, a short half chapter or a chapter on his childhood, him becoming, they try, uh, tried to be, rec- the CIA tried to recruit him. Did I tell you I interviewed a guy from the CIA? Yeah, I tried to give you the, I tried to get you to call him and take, bring him on the podcast. Oh, the yeah, The CIA yeah, yeah. guy? Yep, I remember him. So I interviewed a CIA guy all about his his. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great. What did the CIA get, guy have to say? The guy was basically saying, because Amadeo said when he was, about to graduate law school, the CIA came to him, and they were ta- they were basically in the law school in Emory, and they were asking guy people, lawyers or about to be lawyers that they were asking him to um, fill out, you know, to take tests, take tests to see if they wanted to be a CIA agent. He took it, and they came back and they said, "Look, you know, we want to offer you a job." They offered him a job, but Amadeo, before Amadeo graduated, his father came down with a esophagus cancer, like throat cancer, and so he he couldn't do it. He had to like stay. Mm. and take care of his father so he never ended up doing it he ended up getting a law degree he became a bankruptcy attorney he eventually ended up losing his license you know look he's bipolar so he has fits of he has basically he'll go through he'll be kicking ass for eight months or a year yeah go into a deep deep depression Mm. for four or five days or a week and can't even get out of bed really and the the thing is he's he's also this is ridiculous it's gonna sound silly he's hypersensitive to uh caffeine so he like I would sit there and, and you you're talking to him. He would drink a six pack of of Coke. He, I probably probably drank forty or fifty Cokes a day or Pepsi's a day in prison. He's constantly drinking them to try and elevate himself so that he didn't go, slip into a depression, mm. like a mood stabilizer. So yeah, but isn't that like the opposite of a mood stabilizer? Because you're just going to be fucking jacked on sugar I, I and mean, then you're I, just going to crash. I mean, maybe, but the fact is, is he's he's bipolar, so who knows. He's up yeah. there. You understand? Look, we okay. would be. I'm going to give you an example of what it's like being yeah. around him. Maybe he's just like trying to fight through the depression part with the sugar. Right. So he can feel it coming on. So he drinks four or five of these things yeah. and it k- kicks him back up. Okay. Okay. So, literally, like the guy's brilliant, right? Mm-hmm. He's doing all this legal work in prison, but I mean, I, but I'm just going to give you an example of what it's like being around him. Okay. Just so that you understand that that. So we're all sitting at, at Stonehenge, which was this area in. Uh, Coleman, we yeah. call it Stonehenge. We're all sitting around a concrete picnic table, talking about law work. Talking to your mic, Sorry, your mic. talking about law work. Yeah. And suddenly, me, Pete, Donovan, Frank's there. They're all talking about law work, and I'm just sitting there, you know, listening. And Donovan says something, and all of a sudden, Frank goes, "No, no, that's not going to stand. Absolutely not. No, I'm not going to let that happen. When my legions." March on Washington, we will burn the Constitution, and the president will bow it up my feet. And he sits there for a second, and nobody says shit. Everybody just sits there, and he goes, okay, we need to do a Johnson motion. So I'm going to need a 2255 form. And, uh, and okay, Frank, I'll get you the 25. All right, Frank, do you need to write? Yeah, there's, there's some. Go ask Thomas in, in B3. Okay, I'll go right now and take it, and you walk off. Like and it never happened. Right, and nobody says shit. 